Hey, what's up guys? So today we're going to be doing a short tutorial on how to create and add an enemy death effect particle system, whatever you really want whenever your enemy dies and you can add a sound to it as well. It's pretty pretty easy to add that in. But um there is no one specific way to do this obviously. This is just the way I've been doing it and some people wanted me to do a tutorial on it and I'm gonna do my best to try and explain everything again I'm not that experienced with unity so I don't really know how to improve it that much but I'm pretty sure there are lots of ways to make it better but okay so to get started I've already created you can create whatever you want but like I've already created a, a death effect a particle system here that I've just kind of deactivated for now it looks something like this it doesn't really matter where in the world you create it but and it just has a, a sub particle system here but you just create uh, whatever you want that you're gonna be adding once you delete your player later and I've just made a simple effect here that I am going to be using later so for now I'll turn it off but if I go into my scene view here into my game view um, you can see right now the enemy just gets hit by the sphere I've made and nothing happens. So first I've already created an enemy script and in this script I've already decided how I'm going to call the the method that's going to destroy the enemy. And instead of just destroying the object in here, I'm, I like creating my own separate method for it. So I can call it anywhere like from anywhere within the script and it just makes it easier and less messy so I'm just using the rigid body and using the collision enter here and checking for the sphere tag to destroy the object and so I'm gonna call whatever is in here whenever it gets hit by anything tagged as a sphere so to start doing this I'm uh, gonna start by creating my method here that's just gonna be a public void and I'll just call it destroy so we can uh, and I'm gonna make sure I get rid of that because on destroy is a unity function and I just want it to be called destroy and in here I am going to for now just destroy the game object which is the object that we're currently using and I'm just gonna do that and if I call this function in here now destroy and we don't pass anything in because it's void or because it's not taking any variables in um, and then if I go into the game view and I play the enemy should at least get destroyed now yeah so for now it just disappears and we want to add that effect in so to do that first we're gonna need to reference it in the enemy script so I go back to my enemy script and above everything here I'm going to just I'm gonna create a header for it you don't need to do this but it just helps keep organized so I would do it this is gonna be the unity setup and in here you can create your variables and in this case we're gonna want a public so we can edit it in the inspector and this is gonna be a particle system you could have this be a game object this doesn't really matter it's whatever you want to instantiate and I'm just gonna call it death particles and so now we have a place where we can reference that and so I'm gonna go right back and let that compile and then I click on the enemy and in the inspector right there we can just drag in our death effect now if you're gonna want to duplicate this enemy then instead of just dragging it in here what you probably want to do is you want to go into the assets uh, into the assets and you want to create a folder called enemies or whatever you want want it to be I'm just gonna call it enemy for now and in here uh, I'm going to drag this enemy as a prefab and I'm gonna drag the death effect as a prefab and this makes it so we can just go into this prefab version of the enemy and just drag the death effect in so that it can be used anywhere within the scene by the enemy automatically or it's already gonna pick it up pretty much you don't have to reference it every single time so now I can actually just destroy my death effect from the scene because I don't need it in there anymore now the one thing before we do anything with this uh, reference is in the particle system if you're using a particle system you want to make sure you have looping off and you want to make sure you have it play on awake so that it plays right as it's uh, right as it's the scene starts playing or right as it it's instantiated into the scene so I'm gonna save my scene and now that we have it referenced 
as the death particles. Uh, on under this destroy, we can go and we can say death or instantiate to bring that object up and instantiate it whenever the enemy gets destroyed. So we're going to instantiate it into the scene, and first we need it to we need to pass in what we're actually going to instantiate, and that's going to be our death particles. And then we need a position, which in this case is just going to be our transform dot position, which is our enemy position or whatever object this is under. And for the rotation, I'm just going to put in quaternion identity. But you could pass in the current rotation of the object, but for this tutorial sake, I'm just going to leave it as quaternion identity, which just means it's going to have it's going to be its default rotation and it's just going to pop in. So, this is all we need to do to instantiate the effect in. And now we basically have the we have the basic skeleton for this done, but there's one more thing we're going to want to do, and that's going to be for optimization. So if you hit play now, when this enemy gets hit, it's going to instantiate the effect that we created. Now the issue with this, well, it works like works it works perfectly. It works well. There's the issue with it is that now this clone is here and it's not doing anything and it's just going to be in the scene. And if you have lots of enemies dying and lots of things going on and you just keep adding those on and you never get rid of them, that can really pollute your scene and it's not going to be very handy later on, especially if you're going to have a lot going on in your game. So, the way I used to do this is I used to just um, have every single one of these particle systems attached to their parent and then I did a bunch of stuff in the parent script, but that can get really inconvenient and just make it very messy. So... The way that I've done this now that makes it a lot easier is I've just created a one script that I can use on any effect that I'm adding in my game. So if I go into the enemy death effect we created here, I can bring that up because I don't need that right now. And we're going to create a new script, a new C-sharp script, and it's going to be called, I'm just going to call it an effect object. That will just let us attach it to whatever we want to make an effect. So under the script the only thing we really need at the beginning here is going to be our void start because this is just going to be called as soon as the effect pops into the scene. So under the start method I'm just going to call a destroy and then I'm going to do game object and the cool thing about the destroy method is you can put in a float for time so how long you want to wait and I want to make it so you can edit this for each separate object so I'm just going to call it time and we're going to go up here and we're going to create a public float time so that the player or the whoever is working on the script can just put it in there and you can edit this for whatever object you're using so I'm going to create a header again just called unity setup again you don't need to do that but that helps and now what this is going to do is it's going to call this destroy right at the beginning and it's going to destroy the game object after the amount of time you've put in which is handy because that way you won't have your scene polluted with a bunch of different objects that you don't need in there so under this death effect I have the duration set to five seconds on the particle system so I'm just going to set this to five and now if I play the scene you should see on the side it's instantiated and it's there and then after five seconds once it's done playing it's gone so now we don't have to worry about that being in the scene anymore now that's the basic thing you really need to know on this but if you want to add more to it you can do it really easy so if you go to your uh, your enemy death effect you can also add in a sound so you can go audio source and you can add that in and then you can just have this again set to play on awake and I'm just gonna lower the volume and up the spatial blend not that this really matters for the this just for the tutorial so in here you can add an audio clip and I have one that I brought into the project just to show this off which is just a death sound that I put together really quick and now that's on that object and that's pretty much it what you have to do with that and you can always change the duration if the sound plays for longer than five seconds and you don't want it to cut off but 
that's it. And if you hit play, we should see that it plays the sound as well with that. Yep. So now we get a sound and we get the death particles. And to show how this can be expanded upon really easily, if you go into the effect object script, uh, in this start, you can add whatever you want. And I'm going to use a camera shake that I've already put together for this. So in the camera shake, which again, I take no credit for this script because I was uh, trying to learn how to create a camera shake. And this is actually, I believe, Bracky's script for it. But you could also get an asset from the store or just whatever you want to do. You can just call it in here. So it doesn't really matter what it is. But this camera shake specifically takes in uh, a duration and a magnitude. So if you go into the effect object first, we need to find object to type. And this is a camera shake. And that will find that in the scene. And then we need to call shake, which is the, uh, the function in here, the I enumerator. And then we need to pass in a duration and a magnitude. So I'm going to put in duration and then magnitude. And that way, up here, with the Unity setup, we can just go public float duration. And then we can create a public float magnitude. And now, if you want to make this even fancier, you can go in here and you can add a range so that you can't make it too big or too small. And I'm just going to make this go 0 to 1. So we add a range to both of those. And now if you look in the inspector, once this compiles, which would be under the enemy, or under the death effect, you can see that it has a duration and a magnitude that we can edit. And what I would do here, you, obviously you don't want this to call or find that object every single time, especially if you're not using it. I would go in here and I would have a boolean that go that goes public bool and then I would have shake camera or something like that just to check if it, like if you actually want to do it and then under the start I would go if shake camera then it will do this just so that it doesn't have to bother looking for that object every single time especially if it's not properly using it so if we want a camera shake here, now we can just go shake camera and we can add our duration of 0.1 and then I'll just say 0.5 for the magnitude. Again, this isn't really necessary. This is just so I can show off what you can do with the the effect object because again, you can just program this however you want it. That's that's what's cool about it. And then if you hit play now, it should have a camera shake which it did not for some reason. Okay, so I looked through and what I forgot to do actually was that I forgot that this is a coroutine and you can't just call it like that, like a method. So uh, in here, what you would do to call it from here is you would have to put all of this in parentheses and then you would have to type start coroutine at the beginning. And now this should work and we should have a cool camera shake when our enemy gets destroyed along with our sound and our effect. Yeah, so that wasn't too noticeable, but if you increase the duration, let's do 0.25 there, maybe it will show a little bit better. Yeah, there you go. So that is how I have been creating my death effects or particles or whatever you want to call them, how I've been instantiating things whenever enemies die. That's the cleanest way I've been able to do it so far. Again, you can do this in so many different ways and you can experiment and see what you can do and just have fun with this start method here and just put in whatever you want and add whatever kind of events you want during your uh during like whenever your enemy dies for example with this uh camera with this camera shake which what it was what I did in my game it was calling every single time an enemy died no matter where you were in the game and so what I made it do is I made it check how close you were to the player and then it would add that shake effect if you were close enough to the player that way you just didn't make it messy and have it appear anywhere else but the rest in what you do with this is really up to you 
again if you're going to expand on enemies here and add more i would make an actual enemy f like enemies folder and then you would have a folder under that for each separate enemy so that you can have the death effect and the enemy and whatever else you want in there but this is the basic way to create an enemy death effect and if this was helpful show your support down in the comments and leave a like if you enjoy the video and if it was helpful and I hope I've been able to make it clear and if you have any questions just comment down and I'll I'll see what I can do to help you out but thanks for watching that's been it guys I hope you like the tutorial